In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to produce a reflectance effect that is very common in the real world, but Blender's default material system doesn't support it unless you configure it to do it. If we look at the countertop in this kitchen scene, which is a cycles render, you can see that there is variability in the roughness of the surface. If you look down over here, compared to over here, there's variability in that roughness. And this is actually a physical effect. It happens in the real world. Let me show you some photos that will demonstrate this. I was at a coffee shop, noticed this industrial power unit that had exactly this effect. If you look at the reflectance of the front facing part right here, we can see a little bit of glossy reflection. But on the side, you can very clearly see that it's almost mirror-like. And if we come over here, let me show you another angle. Now from the side angle, that front is more mirror-like and this side is much more rough or diffuse, as we say, with just a hint of glossy reflections. So typically any surface like this is characterized by an underlying diffuse component and an overlaying glossy component. That glossy component is what we're going to be interested in here in this tutorial. We're going to look at two ways that you can configure a material to produce this effect and I have a very simple file that demonstrates it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let me show you an example from this file in the background that we've generated to demonstrate exactly what's happening. With this very simple file, I've got an HDRI image around the scene, and I have the specular set just enough that we can see it, but the material's roughness makes it so it's actually hard to see the glossy reflection. So let me play this, and what you're going to see is that as the camera gets lower to the scene, it suddenly gets much more reflective and almost mirror-like at what we call high glancing angles. So this is the effect that we want to achieve. By default, this is what Blender would do if you set the roughness to be pretty high, such as, say, 0.5. As the camera gets down below, the surface maintains its roughness and we don't see those reflections become sharper. And that's what we want to try and achieve. We're going to talk about that more in just a minute. Let me show you how this can be applied in a rendering to really make it look realistic with nuance. So in this rendering, we can take a look at the fact that we can see the floor right here. The fact that we can see the floor means that light is reflecting off it, but it's reflecting off it in such a way that we really don't perceive it as being very highly glossy. But as soon as we take the camera and we move it down close to the ground, suddenly you can see down here, we get a much more glossy appearance in the reflection. So the reflection is doing two things. It's becoming more intensely reflective as we get closer down to the floor. We're also making the reflection look more sharp, and that's really important. So let's take a look exactly what's happening right here. The first thing that we need to talk about is the concept of a normal. In all 3D applications, this concept is used all over the place. For reflection purposes, what we need to understand is that on any given surface represented by this green bar down here, there is a line that you can draw that's perpendicular to that surface. That is a 90 degree angle. And that 90 degree angle is very important. That's called a normal angle. Sometimes it'll be referred to as normal to the surface. What we want to know is how reflections are based off this relative to our view to that surface. And it turns out that there is a very well understood way that light reflects off surfaces relative to your or viewing angle. This is called the Fresnel curve. And you can see that there's a little value down here called four and a quarter. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But this curve is very, very well understood in the world of computer graphics. It's a physical curve. And what this means is that the degree of reflection changes with how you are viewing the angle that you are viewing to that surface. Let's just reference this to Blender's user interface. Right here, you can see I've highlighted the specular variable. So that's the important thing that we want to understand. And we're secondarily looking at the roughness. So roughness is going to affect the specular reflection. And the specular reflection right here looks like this curve. So what this means is a zero and a 90. Those are what we call incidence angles. And according to your incidence angle, it's either going to be less or more reflective. So let's take a look at what that means. So let's take a look at what we refer to as a high incidence angle. A high incidence angle means you as the viewer are down close to the surface. 
and you're looking at a far angle to a point where your line of sight intersects that surface. And then we draw a line perpendicular to that surface and we measure an angle between those two things and we have what we call a high incidence angle. In this particular case, I could measure it as an 87 degree angle. That's a very high incidence angle and that means it's going to be a highly reflective surface to our line of sight. If we come over here and look at this graph with the Fresnel curve, 87 degrees is pretty far over here, with 90 being the highest incidence angle that you can have. And that means we're going to have nearly a 70% reflection at that high incidence angle. So if we were to come back over and reference our bathroom scene where we have the camera way down close to the floor, we have that higher degree of reflection, which we see down here. Okay. So let's come back over and we're going to look at what that means when we have a low incidence angle. So here, when we have a low incidence angle, that actually means that the camera is up fairly high looking down onto the surface. And so it's a low angle because that low angle is actually pretty close in value to the normal coming off the point where your line of sight intersects that surface. In this particular case, we have a 10 degree incidence, so we have a low degree of reflection in this case. When we come back and we look at our photos, this surface relative to our line of sight is a low incidence angle because the line of sight relative to a normal coming off here is fairly low. And so we have a low degree of reflection we can still see a little bit of reflection, but relative to this surface, which has a high degree of incidence, we have a high degree of reflectivity. But in this particular case, we're also going to have a much glossier surface, and that's what we're moving towards understanding. So when we come over here and look back with our chart, this 10 degree is right here, and so we only have about 4% reflectivity. So what we want to begin to understand is how do we then go and configure Blender's user interface to give us this variability in roughness for the surface? Because by default, Blender does not do this for us. Let's come over and take a look at what Blender does by default to reflections at higher incidence angles when you increase roughness. If we look at these four charts, this one over here is when we have a very low roughness, meaning the surface looks very sharp to our eye. Let's say that you've got roughness set to zero. It's a perfectly mirror-like surface. As your surface roughness increases, the low incidence face-on regions will maintain about the same degree of reflectivity. However, as this roughness increases, the shading system is going to decrease the degree of reflectivity at those higher glancing angles, meaning sort of that edge on look. And so we want to override this default behavior in order to get both increasing reflection intensity and sharper, more mirror-like reflections at higher incidence angles. Let's come in and take a look at Blender's user interface right now. The ground object is what we're going to be looking at for this example. So I'm in the shading tab right here. And the first thing that we are going to look at is the default principled BSDF and how that relates to what we're seeing right here. So if we come over and we take a look at this pane up here where we can see that I've got a camera right about here. In fact, let me move the camera and you can see that it's going to a high and low incidence position. Okay, so this is a low incidence. It's high up, but it's a low incidence because it's very close to the angle of a line that's normal to the surface that we're looking at. Okay, whereas if we come back over here, we're seeing the surface from a high incidence angle. And therefore, it is more reflective because that's what the Fresnel effect does. But if we come back up and we take a look at this, you can see just a, a little bit of a hint of the clouds that are in the HDRI image above us. Well, when we look at the specular right here, it is at that four and a quarter percent. So this is the default value that I would highly recommend, but it's just not giving us variability in how the surface changes according to roughness. So we need to configure the material to do that a little bit of a different way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that off to the side for right now. I'm going to decouple, let me come over here and turn that off, 
and we're going to look at the d duplicate of that shader right down here. But in this particular case, the roughness is now being controlled by two other nodes. So allow me to plug that in right here, and then we'll turn the shader back on. So when we look at the top, it is now going to be more rough. So at this low incidence angle, it's going to be rough. Whereas when I come over and we move the camera close down to that surface, you can see it is now more mirror-like. So what we're doing is we're looking at adding these two nodes to control roughness according to incidence angle. So what you do is you add an RGB curves and this RGB curves is going to change the roughness and we're going to define two roughness points. The one right here is about 0.5 on the roughness scale. And then down here, it's basically I'm setting it to zero. And it's a little bit hard to select these knots right here, but you would select one and then the other and you would see these values change right there. So 1.0 over here is equivalent to a 90 degree incidence angle. And this up here is relative to a zero degree incidence angle, which is looking straight down on the surface. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this to clarify that in just a little bit. But to drive this, to let the shader know how we are going to relate this RGB curve to roughness, is we have to tell it to change this according to the facing angle. So you would add a layer weight. So you would just come in and you would add, do a search, we would do a search for layer weight, and then you would add that in. It drives over here into the color, and then that will tell this to relate to the incidence going from zero incidence to 90 incidence. So let's take a look at how that factors into the charts. So we are reflecting about right here because of the incidence angle, but now if we relate Blender's user interface to this graph that we've put in there, it's a direct relationship top to bottom. So at a low incidence angle right here, we're gonna have the higher degree of roughness, which in our case is 0.5. So the glossiness is gonna be not actually very visible because it's pretty rough. But as our incidence increases, we're gonna have more reflectivity and we're gonna have a sharper degree of reflection. So that's how this relates. So when we come back over to Blender, it is this facing node, the layer weight, that's telling it to behave this way and to feed all that into the roughness. Now, it's interesting because we can actually change this. It's a linear curve right now, but if we want to make it so that it's only the very sliver edge of looking at that surface clear down to have that sharpness, we can change this right here because at every point you can see down here, it's actually a little bit rougher than it is closer up here. And that is because this cone right here is a representation of the camera's field of view. And we can draw a line coming from the camera's focal point to any position. So there would be one right here with a line coming up and you could measure that. And it would be a little bit lower. It would be down a little bit over here. So it would be a little bit less reflective and it would be a little bit less sharp. It would be a little more rough. That's exactly what we are seeing in Blender down here. It's a little bit rougher down here than it is up here because the line of sight has a slightly more shallow line of sight. This is my favorite way of doing it. This is actually a little bit closer to reality, but there's a secondary way of doing it. But let me just show you, if we add a secondary knot in here, we change this, we can change that so that it remains fairly rough across most of the surface but only until you get to really quick changes in your glancing angle do you get that sharpness. And that's exactly what we just saw right here. So I like this because this gives you a little bit of sort of artistic control over how you want to do it. So in the, in the next segment, what we're going to do is we're going to look at another, a secondary way of configuring the material system to behave this way. In the next example, we're going to take a look at just a different way of configuring the material system to variable roughness according to incidence. But let's go back to the original example that we just configured. We can see that the surface roughness changes as the camera's incidence angle increases. This is called a glancing angle. 
we can see that it's changing with every degree of incidence and getting a little bit more rough. But there's another way to do it whereby we just simply use the layer weight function to modulate how much of one layer shows relative to another. That's method two. Let's take a look at this one right here. It starts off high at fairly rough, and as we get down low, it becomes more mirror-like. Now this one is different because it's not changing the roughness according to this low incidence. It's all about the same degree of sharpness or roughness down here. So let's talk about why this method behaves this way. Now the way that this one works is that we have two layers. We have two BSDF layers right here. And the only difference between them is the roughness. So on one of them, I have roughness set all the way down to zero. So it's perfectly mirror sharp. The other duplicate up here is the roughness is set up at about 0.5. They're otherwise identical. So what we do is we come over here and we blend them into a mix shader. So what you would do is you would just come up to add and you would do a search for a mix shader and you would add that to the scene. Each of these would get added and then once it's added you plug each layer in. So typically how the layer weight works, if I remove this right now, it's got a simple factor value. FAC means factor. And a 0.5 means it is blending the results of each of these two shaders together, which are being calculated independently. And then finally mixing them together with each having equal weight to the final output. Okay. And then this is then added to our final material output. So that's how it works. And this is actually very useful. The mix shader is incredibly useful for creating subtle material effects. But in this case, we don't want this to be a uniform mixing. We want this mixing to happen according to incidence angle. So this is where we would come in and instead we would change it according to facing angle. So that is the weighting factor. So if I come back over here and we gradually go back up, we see less and less of the really glossy part and we're now back into where we're seeing more of the rougher surface, okay? Because our incidence angle is getting lower right here. And so the facing function weights more of the mixing towards the rougher material. Whereas when our incidence angle increases, the layer weight facing function weights more of the result down to the sharper material. I hope you found this to be useful. This can be kind of confusing stuff, but I wanted to walk over some of the theory so that you could understand why it was that these behaved the way that they did. And I hope you found this to be useful.